Alright, this is the setup program. Um, Let's see here. Alright, storage. Drive A. Drive, wait a minute. Primary disk. That's what we want. How do I change that? Configure. Fixed disk drives. Primary disk. Let's call it a type 0 and see what happens. If I can learn to type. Okay. Okay. Alright, so it wants, I'm going to tell it to ignore changes, because we don't want to have that set. Okay. And now it's starting right on the XTIDE BIOS. So that's a little aggravating if it's going to nag us about that fixed disk every time. Okay, um, so I did some experimentation here, uh, which is long and boring, and I'm sure you don't want to... I'm sure you don't want to see all that. Uh, what it comes down to is, oh, excuse me, the XTIDE BIOS is um, it's starting up off of the network card fine, but it's locking up um, when it tries to boot. Even before it tries to like boot off the floppy drive or anything, I can't select floppy drive boot or anything. It just dies right here. Now, um, I was able to get into the uh, BIOS setup program and disable the uh, disk drives on in the uh, built-in BIOS and then it booted right. However, after I do that it nags me about finding a new disk drive a new disk drive because I've got the existing one turned off every time that I start the machine up. So that's not good do not like. So here, here's the problem with having your setup utilities, your BIOS setup utilities on the hard drive. If we set the hard drive geometry to the wrong thing, you can't get into the BIOS setup anymore. This is getting really dumb. This is a stupid way to design a computer. Now, fortunately, I think we can get around this by turning off the power to the CMOS battery since we have this external battery pack now. So let's, uh, let's power it back up and see if it clears out the bad settings in the CMOS and allows us to auto-detect the disk drive again. Jeez, oh whiz. Alright, system options not set it says. It found the uh, it found the disk drive and set it up. Loaded the default CMOS checksum values. We're going to hit F1 to save changes. And then it should, uh, well, it's not going to boot because it's going to hit that XTIDE error. There's no way to turn off that drive auto detection, so I just have to hit F2 and tell it to ignore the changes. And when I do that, the XTIDE BIOS boots the disk drive just fine. So, well, I'm not sure. Um, I have one ISA slot still free in here. We have the Sound Blaster 16 on the bottom, the network card with the XT IDE BIOS on top, or in the middle, and an empty slot on top. So, um, the only other idea that I've got is to stick a different hard drive controller in the thing. Um, and just not hook anything up to the internal interface and then maybe it'll quit auto detecting it. So um, I guess I mean we won't get any 16-bit I.O. transfers with an 8-bit IDE card installed but that's all I've got at the moment. So um, and if, if we have if we stick a multi-IO card in there, a 16-bit multi-IO card, I'm sure I can find one of those on eBay for like 10 bucks or something. No, those multi-IO cards don't have their own BIOS. They still rely on the system BIOS. So I'll have to get a 16-bit multi-IO card just for the IDE interface and jumper it to a different IO address and then 
reconfigure the XTIDE BIOS uh, to use the base address for that expansion card rather than the built-in IDE interface. Ugh. Do not like. Very disappointing. Uh, all of this to try to use an LBA disk drive. So let's um, let's go ahead and install an LBA disk drive and see if we can actually format it and boot off of it. So yeah, now, um, now with the 8-bit uh, XDID card installed in the machine, it doesn't nag at startup about that disk. Um, it just think that, thinks that there is no disk installed on the uh, internal controller and doesn't mess with us. Um, That's, that's it for this long-winded garbage talk time. Uh, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.